I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, to my Bibliosprand, Biblioswarn, and Bibliomancers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means a lot to me. Hi everyone, uh, this is Patrick here and Sarah. This is, I think this is the first time I do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a booktuber on this, uh, on this channel. So yeah, hi Sarah. <laughs> hey, finally, we've only been saying we were going to do this for months. <laughs> two months? Is it two months? Two months. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so today's video is, it will be me and Sarah talking about a 20th century voice by Naoki Urasawa. 20th century voice and also 20, 21st century voice. But for this particular video, we will just be talking about the first five volumes, which is the first story arc of the 20th century voice. Okay, Sarah, so before we get started, can you introduce uh, the premise of the manga first? Sure. I think that this is, first of all, if you have not read 20th Century Boys and you're here because you are a fantasy reader and you follow along Patrick's channel, I think that this is a great place to start. I think it's a really easy manga to get into. I don't think that it requires a lot of like extra context. And I think that it would appeal really highly to people who like fantasy novels, coming of age novels. <laughs> the basic setup is that we have a group of friends who are growing up together in the 1950s. And as part of their friend group, they are bullied <laughs> by these two evil twins. And to try to escape the evil twins, they come up with like a secret camp of sorts. So they have like the secret hideout. And while they're there, one of the friends, Kenji, has like a really big imagination. And so he kind of devises this story for them to play out. So it's imaginative play. And he yeah. devises this story where the world is falling into this kind of apocalyptic scenario and they have to band together and save the world. So you yeah. have their story as friends in, it is in the fifties, right? I think it is in the 1950s that they. Either fifties or sixties. Uh, Maybe the sixties. Yeah. 60s. yeah. Or the 60s. No, it is the mm. 60s, I think, because they talk about like the music of the 60s. I think mm. you're right. Um, so they're talking about, they're kind of coming up with that, imagining, like they had that imaginative play, they're coming up with that scenario. And then we also kind of flash forward to them as adults and strange things start to happen in Japan and around the world that start to spark memories of this game that they played mm. as they were children. And amongst all of these really weird things happening, a figure arises and this figure is known as friend. Right. And yeah. so we are left trying to discover the mystery of who friend might be why friend seems to know about this game that they played as kids and how the way that they told the story as kids can help them save the world in the present time. So yeah. it's kind of this dual unfolding mystery where you get a lot of characterization that comes through both in the past timeline and present timeline and a lot of commentary on like friends and how they drift, like drift apart and come back together. And it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I think you nailed it so well. <laughs> you nailed the premise so well. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's excellent. It's it's easy when you like it a lot. It's easy to talk about. But it's, uh, I think, like I said, a great introduction for anybody who wants to get started with manga. And if you're already a fantasy fan, because there are definitely fantastic elements. It's probably more... I hate to say dystopian because I feel like we get a really like weird feeling now from mm -hmm. saying dystopian mm -hmm. because that subgenre has been so overdone but yeah. it's it's definitely got a fantasy slash sci-fi feeling and there yeah. are elements of the, the mystical, mystery yeah, mystery yeah. thriller yeah definitely and mystery thriller a bunch of different genres this is you know like an author that he it's inspired by <laughs> there's a lot of blending of genres here yeah i definitely agree though that this is very very uh, accessible to someone new to manga yeah it mm -hmm. is very accessible the writing is easy it is very easy to follow and it is well very page turning yeah the pacing is excellent i there are lots of really good things about this story like from the characterization to the artwork but the pacing is yeah so good so good it is so good how do you know about 20th century boys I thought we were talking about Absolute Boyfriend. That's the only one <laughs> no. I've ever been. I, that's your favorite manga. We're not talking <laughs> about that right now. <laughs> um, I So you are the person who actually put me on to reading this. I had heard of this author before because I have read some of Monster, mm -hmm. which is a sad story because I started reading it and I was a university student, so I was too poor to keep buying <laughs> volume so I had to stop uh, but I really liked his style and so when you had put up I think you put up a video about your favorite completed manga series 
on your channel. And this was one of the ones that you talked about. I actually I think, that, did, did I put this one? <laughs> did you put this one? If not, then you told me about it on Discord. Uh, yeah, yeah, Regardless, yeah. like however I found it, it was through yeah. you. It was you yeah, who okay. told me to read it. <laughs> so you told me that you thought I would like it just because of some of the other authors that I like, some of the storytelling techniques that I enjoy. So that is how I ended up picking it up. And then when I said I was going to read it, then you were nice enough to say that you would reread it so we could do it together. Yeah, so for me, uh, this is the, it's been more than, 10 years, yeah, it's been more than 10 years since I first read 20th, 20th, 20th Century Boys. And yeah, I think the, the second read, it's as good as the first one. <laughs> so- You left, you uh, left a good enough gap. Like 10 years is enough to forget little things. I, oh, okay, because you have read the manga. So one of the main point of 20th Century Boys since the beginning, since the first story arc is who is friend, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know about, I mean, I knew who friend was already, but when I was doing the secondary, I actually forgot who he is. <laughs> I mean, okay, who the hell is this guy? It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And it is one of the biggest, biggest twists of the entire series, and I forgot about it. <laughs> so you have read the first five volumes. What do you think about this series so far? I like it so much. So number one, I think that you understand my taste. So thank you. That was a friendship qualification. So now we can continue to be friends, but I, I really, really like it. I haven't read a lot of manga. Like I was, jo I was joking about absolute boyfriend, but it is one of the only like complete series that I have read. And that was when I was like a teenager. Um, I really like anime, but I had never gotten into manga because I'm not a super visual person. I find it harder to, take in stories that way. And so I had always been hesitant and I thought, you know, if something was really good, then they would animate it and I would watch it and I would love it and that would be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really glad that I decided to start with this one because I'm really liking it. I like, I like so many things about it. I don't know if we're going to break it down into like the different parts later, but I just think that the storytelling is so compelling. Mm -hmm. He brings the characters to life so quickly. You get attached to them really quickly and you can differentiate between them really quickly. And the, the mystery, the background is just also very, very compelling. You want to know what happens, which is why it's been very sad that we couldn't organize this earlier because I really want to keep reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember the first time I read through the, uh, this manga, I think it was at the seventh chapter. So it was within the first volume. So for me personally, I think the artwork is very different from a lot of shonen manga or seinen manga that I usually read like Vinland Saga, uh, Berserk, those kind of manga. I think the artwork is very different. Naoki Urasawa, I think his artwork is very unique. It's distinctive. It, I mean, when you take a glance at the artwork, you know that, okay, this is him. This is his artwork. <laughs> yeah, so back then I thought uh, I thought the artwork wouldn't click with me, but after just one volume, I couldn't put it down. As you said, it is very compelling and everything about it, the characters, the mystery, everything's so good. Agreed. Yeah. And I yeah. think I haven't, I, I do own a couple of volumes of Monster and I have read those and I can't, I definitely agree that it's a very distinctive style because I could mm. tell just by looking at it that it was the same person and I have zero skill in that area. <laughs> <laughs> the last person to pick that up so it is a very distinctive style but but now you have read plenty of manga right other than you know that stupid boyfriend <laughs> I, ha I have but still not still not complete ones so like I have finished ones like Haikyuu when I love the show mm -hmm. then I went on and completed the end of the manga and I have read parts of other things but from start to finish I don't I don't think so oh nothing yet I don't think so let me look Oh, look at that perfect volume. So cool. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think there's been a series that I have read from like volume one to the end. Um, ah, actually, yeah. the Sailor Moon ones. So they're up there at the top. So I did I did read Sailor Moon. They're on the other side, probably. Well, this know. is probably ah. this probably will be the second one. <laughs> so yeah, this will be the second one. So yeah. that's OK. You, you've probably created a monster now. It'll never stop. <laughs> Oh I put God. myself on a on a book buying ban, and I keep buying all this manga. And Andrew's like, I thought you were buying books. I was like, these are books. This <laughs> manga? <laughs> they are still books. <laughs> I just and they just keep coming. He's like, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> and you're buying you're buying all the gorgeous editions. <laughs> They're so pretty. They're so nice. I like them so oh, yeah. much. Like the yeah, covers yeah. are so beautiful. 
except for volume two, because I can't get that anywhere. I am on a list on Book Depository and they keep sending me emails being like, it's back in stock. I'm like, yes. So I go to get it and then it's already gone. I'm like, What's happening? Wow. <laughs> that is so fast. <laughs> I know it's, it's sad, but I will keep my eyes peeled. So, so far, who are your favorite characters? Um... I really, it's really hard because now I have got, I've got one volume past where we are. And so my favorite character has kind of shifted a little bit. Ah, okay, uh, okay, I really okay. like um, Ocho. Is that how you told me? I'm, I yeah, Ocho, it? Ocho. Yeah. yeah, Ocho. He is my favorite character so far mm. in the first five volumes. I love it. I loved how he was introduced. I love the like little bits of backstory we got at first and the suspicions that we had about him and the way that his character built up and then who he actually turned out to be versus who we thought he was. And he has a really sad backstory as well. Um, and and I just, I, I'm really interested in his character. I think that he is my, he's my favorite so far. And his introduction to the series was so why oh, it was it was so cool. I got goosebumps. Okay. I got goosebumps. <laughs> so after you read one more volume, who's your favorite characters now? <laughs> Kana. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ka Ka Kana is awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. I love Kana. I think the more I, mean, I love Kana in the beginning too. She's super cute. And I just yeah. like the dynamic. Like I I enjoy that trope in in fantasy in particular, but in storytelling where you have like the guardian character and then the child that they have to protect. Um, and the like Kana's background and what happened to her mom and how she ended up in her uncle's care. Like all of those things are interesting. And I'm assuming I will find out more and more as I mm -hmm. go on, but it's, it, it all lends to the mystery, which I really enjoy. Was it, surprising? Awesome. Was it surprising to you that there is a time skip? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was for me as well. <laughs> At yeah, first, I was I expecting a tiny yeah. time skip from like yeah. whenever, because we start in ninety. Well, there's the, the past, past, but then there's like ninety seven. So I was expecting the skip from like ninety seven to like nineteen ninety nine, like right before the year two thousand. But I was not mm. expecting a big time skip. How many was it? Was it fourteen? Fourteen years. Yeah, I think it was fourteen years. I think. Yeah, it, it is a it is a huge. <laughs> so. Um, I'm curious about this because you love a Vinland saga, right? Vin yes. Vinland saga. Have you read Berserk? I forgot. No, I haven't started it yet. I have the first two of the like, whatever they're called, deluxe edition ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start it soon. I'm just this is I'm gonna finish this first. Yeah, but for 20th century boys, there is basically there's no battle scenes, right? There's no battle scenes mm -hmm. like the Vinland saga. And how do you feel about it? Do you think it is uh, it is still as compelling with or without battle scenes? Yes, I think 100%. I think it is just mm -hmm. as compelling. I love battle scenes. And that's what yeah. I loved about Vinland Saga. And that's what made Vinland Saga so fun to watch animated because the battle scenes are awesome. Oh, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so good. But I think I think for me, I actually prefer battle scenes on screen because you get the background music, right? Like you get yeah. the you get the music. And like I said, I'm not a super visual person and I'm not very musical either this is just the Sarah doesn't have very many talents hour but I'm not able to do like a lot of those things <laughs> so when it's animated for me then I can really get into it like I don't know if I would get as much enjoyment reading Attack on Titan as I have oh, watching yeah. Attack on Titan for example mm -hmm. but this kind of storytelling which is meandering and it unfurls like piece by piece and you're discovering it panel by panel I think that works really well and so I thought it was absolutely compelling I did not need any battles in order to yeah, keep me going yeah and it is super page turning right <laughs> it is you cannot stop it yeah is, it just cannot okay. stop <laughs> yeah and you know even though this works so well on a manga series I think it would it would work really well on a tv show too they did. They adapted it like live action or something, didn't they? In Japan, oh, I think I read oh, yeah. that online. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I forgot about it, <laughs> but I I didn't watch that one. I didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah I, 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 because, I did not watch it uh, because you. Uh, I mean, for me, I I came from a manga background and then I started reading novels. But for you, it's the other way around. You read mm -hmm. novels first and then now you started reading manga. So, yes. do you have any comparison for novels that well similar to Twenty Century Boys? Yes, he Urusawa has to be a Stephen King fan, right? Like this must yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he has to be. You can see so much influence. Like so, he takes so much. Like clearly, he must admire his work, and I think that it works really well because I think that he 
pays homage to the people that he likes without like it never feels like he's lifting from them it just feels like there are similar threads or similar themes Mm. uh the way that he unravels the story but I was also reading at the same time that I started 20th century boys I was reading boys life and there's a lot of overlap there as well because it's a coming of age story it's about a young boy things that are happening there is a mystery element in boy's life as well and so I thought that that was there was a lot of a lot of overlap there but I was surprised like this is I mean this is I don't I don't have that much experience so Mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't be surprised but it's just it's so character driven it feels so fully rounded in a way that has been difficult for like either manga or graphic novels to feel for me in the past Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think a lot of people have mentioned that this is something similar to it it yes uh yeah (laughs) it feels very like because you have the dual perspective like you get the kids in their youth and then you see them again as adults and Mm. you have to fill in the gaps like what happened in between what brought them to this point so definitely a lot of a lot of overlap there and you've read it right no, I haven't. That's why I asked you. <laughs> yeah. what? I thought you did. I thought you read, you read The Stand. Yeah, I've read The Stand. I've read The Stand. But I I haven't read it. What? <laughs> Sarah, I thought you knew about this. I thought I knew too. I thought I knew you. But I don't. <laughs> you need yeah, to read I... it though. You haven't. Because I know you've been you've been kind of burned by Stephen King in the past. But you you will read it, right? Yeah. I, I will, I will. I mean, uh, the issue with my, my issue with Stephen King is mostly with the endings. It's not with the storytelling at all. And, and his characters are all really good, but the endings are usually where I, eh, that's it. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but to be fair, I've read only The Stand and Long Walk. Mm-hmm. And then also uh, The Miss. I think it was The Miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, only those three. And I read the Dark Tower, but it was so long ago. I, I, I don't even remember what I was reading about. <laughs> yeah, just the first book. <laughs> so sure, the, fir- the first book feels like a fever dream anyway. So <laughs> yeah. sure, even when you're reading it, you're like, what's happening? You know, you know, I talk about this with uh, some of my friends who love Stephen King's. I don't remember anything. It feels like a fever dream because that's exactly how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you remember more than you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, it's it's true. Uh, Naoki Urasawa is a huge fan of Stephen King, and mm-hmm. it is, and you can tell from a lot of his a lot of his other works like Monster and also a Billy Bat, and yeah, a lot of his other works. It really felt like well, there is a lot of uh, inspiration from Stephen King. And you have read this well, you have read six the sixth volume, right, <laughs> of Twenty Century Boys. You have seen the Shawshank Redemption. Well, inspiration. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is some more Stephen King inspiration that gets pulled in there. And I, that part has been very hard not to continue on. I really want to read yeah, what yeah. is going to happen there. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, lots of Stephen King inspiration for sure. But just that whole like coming of age element mm. is very prominent. And I love that. So. Uh, by the way, your sister is a huge manga fan, right? Yes. Yeah. Has she read this one? I don't think she has. I think she's probably going to take them from me when I am done. She reads a lot of fantasy stuff and I don't know if she, like, I don't know if this would have shown up on her radar, if it would have appealed to her. I don't know. So I know that she hasn't read it because I asked her, so I will pass it along. Mm. What was her favorite manga again? What is her favorite? I mean, Full Metal Alchemist is her favorite. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. (laughs) Which is like everybody's favorite. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an easy easy pick there. Yeah. Oh, you have, you have watched that one though. I have watched it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have watched that. I've one, watched yeah. a lot more than I have than I have read. <laughs> yeah, you've watched a lot. I know. <laughs> 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 so, uh one uh, one more thing I think before we go to spoiler territory, so I, I just I'm just curious about one thing because you haven't been to Japan, right? So, I'm curious about this. Because the setting of 20th century boys is almost well, in, almost entirely in Japan, almost mm-hmm. entirely in Japan. And do you feel like it is uh, weird because you haven't been to Japan, you have you haven't seen the culture or something like that? Um, it, sometimes I I don't ever think it's weird, but sometimes I worry mm-hmm. that I'm missing like tiny cultural mm-hmm, references mm-hmm. or jokes or things that what I do like um, in in this and I have seen it in other things as well. Sometimes I'll be like a little asterisk and then they will explain something. 
<clears throat> so there'll be like a note. And in the back of these volumes, there are some like author's notes and like little notes on the text. So they'll put in like editor notes. So here, like at the back, they have a couple pages of editor's notes and it'll be mm -hmm. little things um, like it talks about a shrine that someone visits and that's a reference to this. And this means that. So I do appreciate that this is in here and that helps with some of the cultural context. And that's what's nice about reading translated works is that you get to learn about things that you wouldn't otherwise know there was a reference in one of the books about a tv series that i'm assuming was the inspiration for one of the like fake superheroes in one punch man so there was oh, okay, like, okay. The, the guy on the bike <laughs> Yeah. What's his name? Moomin Moomin Rider, maybe? I don't know. Oh, yeah, remember, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there, Moomin was Rider. <laughs> there was a reference to this in here, and I was like, oh, that's hilarious. So it's <laughs> it's nice because it it builds on things. And you know, I um it's funny because I compared to like most people, I feel like mm. I am fairly well versed in like anime and those kinds of things. But compared to someone like you or my sister, I am like only at the tip of the iceberg. So I feel like there's so many references that I don't get. And I really appreciate having that cultural context, like you said. So it's nice to to see that. And it just makes I think it makes the story more interesting because I'm learning mm. things about the setting at the same time that I'm seeing the story the story play out but I'm sure there's things that totally go over my head which is true for anything like there's tons of books where there's like biblical allusions or references to Greek mythology or whatever like that you you know you you need to be well versed in those things to pick up on everything yeah even to this day I still there's still a lot of uh, America or UK stuff that I still went over my head <laughs> there's still yeah. a lot yeah I mean I haven't been those, I haven't been there I haven't been outside Asia in my life <laughs> so yeah, but you have been uh, to Japan, right? Yeah, I have been to Japan. It is really cool. Probably, probably the best country that I've ever visited so far. <laughs> it is so That's cool. Awesome. And because, well, I love manga anime, and it is sometimes it feels like heaven. <laughs> if only, <laughs> if, only <laughs> if only we could input fantasy novels there as well, it would be perfect. <laughs> right? You need yeah. To go anywhere else. <laughs> so before we move on to spoilers, spoiler territory, I think let's talk about why you should read Twenty Century Boys. Just from the first five volumes. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. Maybe it's All from right, the so as, as the person who has not finished hmm. it, I think if you're coming in like me and you don't have a lot of experience with manga, I think that this is a perfect place to start. Like Patrick said earlier, it's very accessible. It There are not too many details that are kind of coming at you all at once. I think that the artwork is very clear. I think that the story is compelling and that the mystery unravels in a way that makes you want to keep turning the page. And I think regardless of what you go into a book for, this gives you a little bit of everything. It gives you excellent characterization. It gives you a really meaty mystery to like, you know, dig your hands into. It gives you pacing that is really easy to kind of like flip through. It has tons of strengths. And I think that it would be a great start for anybody who wants to get into manga. Also, sorry yeah. if you heard my children yelling in the background. I'll mute it's while okay. you talk, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's completely okay. And yeah, I completely agree with uh, with Sarah because uh, as I said earlier, the first time I read through 20th Century Boys, I totally didn't expect, totally didn't expect that this would become one of my favorite manga series of all time. And for all the reasons that Sarah just mentioned now, I think you can, you can definitely tell whether you will love this manga series or not just from reading the first the first five volumes, no, the first volume, you can already tell whether this will be something that you will love or not. So yeah, if you haven't, somehow you haven't read 20th Century Boys, I highly, highly recommend it. Seriously, trust me, just read the first, read the first volume and I think you will be hooked immediately. Yeah. So now I think we will talk uh, spoilers. So if you haven't read uh, 20th Century Boys, yeah, I think you, will, you can come back, you can come back to this later after you've read the first volume until the fifth volume to begin the spoilers part i think we will just talk about this one first which scenes were your favorite so far uh there's so many good scenes i yeah. really love ocho's introduction like we talked about yeah, before. yeah like when he comes on the scene when we get to see him um as an adult I really like um, Yukiji, the young girl. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yukiji. Like when she comes in as a kid and she like comes in to save the day and she's like this big, <laughs> you know, frightening presence. She's the only person who can get the twins out of the way. Yeah. Uh, I really like that part too. Um, I the, the part that blew me away the most is the end of volume five where you, oh, 
you've kind of gone into the battle. So I was expecting when I went into this, I didn't know mm. what to expect. I didn't even know what it was about. Like even yeah. you had only told me like, it's a coming of age story. You'll like it for that reason. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, I'm sure I will. So I thought that the unfurling of like between when all of the weird stuff starts to happen, I think it's in 1997 mm -hmm. up to the, the night of the millennium, like the yeah. night when it's new year's Eve, 1999. I thought that was going to be the whole thing. So I thought that ah, this, like, yeah. this mystery was going to be unfolding for all of these volumes. And so when at the end of volume five, when you see them about to go into battle and then it just fades to black and you find out that the friendship party has been successful and that yeah. everyone is kind of assimilated. It's like, what the <laughs> <What happened? laughs> so that scene like that very last panel where they're walking through the gate and they've got the eye and everybody's like kind of filing along single file I love that moment because that's when I knew like this is going to be even bigger this is yeah. going to be something even more than I thought it was going to and it's I'm so intrigued so that was I don't know if it was my favorite moment but it was like a shocking moment I was like, yeah yeah <laughs> I did not think that it, this is gonna happen it's definitely one of the one of the most shocking moments for me as well because like you I, I also expected that okay this will go throughout the entire series but no it's not <laughs> and you know because right now we're feeling the gap uh, from the past and also the present time frame right so from the, when, when they were kids so they have to remember the events from they were, when they were kids, and now there will be one more that one more time time frame, which is this one, because we don't know what happened in in the battle. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know. I want. To. You, <laughs> you know. Will, I you don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> you will know soon. Well, not not really soon, but you will know. <laughs> and you know, uh, when you first uh, see the character Ocho, do you know immediately that this was him? Um. No, it, like you can't like uh, like the way that he draws his his face, his eyes. Like once you know, you can look and say like that is definitely that kid growing yeah, up. Like, yeah. Yes, one hundred percent. But I don't think I knew right away. And even when they were giving, so once he comes in as an adult and I start giving his backstory, which is one of the reasons that I really like his character because I think that he's done a great job of fleshing out his backstory, making him like giving him that tragic past you know he has mistakes that he can never make up for and he has decided mm. to push his life in a certain direction to try to become a better person which i really i really like but even at first i didn't really get that it was him i was like is this him like is this his bad and then as it was happening i was like no this is so sad. <laughs> you're doing this to me so i i did not know and i mean they make you suspect that he is friend like he's our first main suspect at the beginning yeah. mm. um and so it was it was fun to see that reveal happen and it also made the who is going to be friend question even bigger because now you know that he can pull these little tricks on you and kind of lead you in one direction and then pull the you know pull you all the way around so it gives more like it makes the, the mystery more dynamic yeah yeah and Ocho was the one who created the, that symbol right this this symbol Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and yeah the clue was really there and we really thought that oh this this would be him <laughs> but you're right though that that background it was really sad it's really sad i mean it was just a few panels but it was enough <laughs> yeah that's all it takes and i think that like at least for me like that's the the signal that someone's really good at what they do you have read far more widely than i have so i don't know if you think the same thing but to me, I definitely, the mark of a, I definitely a real think, artist. I definitely think the same thing because I thought I, a lot, quite a lot of manga actually requires a lot of well, you must read like five or six volumes before it gets good. But for this one, it's not. You just read one volume, and you know this is so good already. Yeah, you're hooked. Yeah. That's all yeah. you need. <laughs> yeah. And there is one scene. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the detective right now, but it was the detective that almost caught who friend is, yes. and and he was killed. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that, that that one was really crazy to on me the too. way to his <laughs> grandson's birthday party exactly <laughs> so I, was, I, I also thought it was hilarious because he's clearly buying him a pikachu but they can't call it pikachu <laughs> <laughs> forget what they call it but it's like discount pikachu <laughs> <laughs> it's a copyright issue <laughs> it's so sad because you get and again like that that detective shows up 
in so few panels, but mm. with the information that we're given, we can see his how his relationship played out with his daughter and his regrets about his life and how he's trying to find that balance and make up for lost time. And so when he is caught and when he is killed, it, it hits really hard, even though yeah, you don't really know is. him that well. It is, yeah, that, that scene was really sad thinking about it. It was. <laughs> it was really sad. And, you know, uh, back then, when I first read that one, I also thought that because, I mean, the character doesn't even look cool, right? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look cool. But again, Naoki Rosawa just know how to make each character so compelling. Mm -hmm. Even even if they doesn't look, well, well, handsome or something. <laughs> and there's, like, most people in this look, like, normal. They just look like everyday, like, regular people. Yeah, Which yeah. Which can yeah. be nice, too. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be in these, these stories, yeah. too. <laughs> Oh my god. All us non-supermodels out there. Want to be in Usually in manga, every character is so handsome, every every right? girl is so pretty. <laughs> but not here. Definitely not here. And the evil twins are so annoying. Oh, they're the worst. I was also surprised when they came back in. I was mm. not surprised that they were part of the friend group. I was like, of course yeah. you would be. Like if anybody was going to be. But like, like rolling up and like thinking they're so smooth and like, oh, we were such good friends. Like, get out of here. Leave. <laughs> you bully everyone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then, uh, and yeah, I also love Yukiji. I think, uh, I think Yukiji, even though she's one of the very few female characters in, I mean, comparatively, yeah, definitely uh, male characters, there yeah, are definitely so much more male characters than female characters. But the female characters in this manga series really shy. Like Yukiji, and then uh, uh, after the sixth volume, Kana. Mm -hmm. I think Kana is my favorite character. <laughs> and Kana yeah. plays a big role in the early volumes, even though she can't do anything because she's a baby, but she provides a lot of that inspiration and a lot of the, uh, I think a lot of Kenji's resilience comes from knowing that he has to take care of her and then he has to make sure that she's okay. So mm. she she provides that reason for him to keep pushing and keep going forward. Oh yes, I love that scene so much when uh, I think the store owner wanted to kick him mm -hmm. out and I don't, I don't, I, what was the requirement? He has to leave the baby? What, what yeah, he has to, he can't, he's like, you can't run a store and have a baby on your back, like ah, get rid of yeah. that baby. <laughs> yeah, and no, unacceptable. <laughs> Zero percent chance that that's happening. Yeah, I love Kenji. Kenji is a great main character, really great yeah. main character. And it's really, it's really sweet because I think this happens before the switchover because we see the last chapter before the end of volume five is right before the time skip, right? Mm -hmm. So Kana is a teenager and we see her, um, like her, clearly she has been inspired by her uncle. Like she wants, she likes the things that he likes. She has things that, you know, she enjoys because they're connected to him. So I, it's nice to see that too. Like he was obviously a big influence on her life, just as she was kind of his reason for fighting earlier in the, in the manga. Yeah. Well, Kenji is basically his, her dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there is this song that Kenji sang before the, the battle, the battle happens. You can actually listen to the song on YouTube, you know? Really? Yeah, there, there's the song. So basically, Naoki Urasawa, the, the author, really create the song. So you can, you can, so we readers can actually listen to it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and the song is really good. But do not, do not read the comments. They are all spoilers. Because they'll be spoilers. I'll get you to <laughs> yeah, send me, yeah. I'll get you to send me the song. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I did see the mention because you had told me before we started doing this, that 20th Century Boys was a song by T-Rex, right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the yeah band. And they do it mention is. that song in the, the manga the, as well. Like he's listening to it at some point. It is in the first panel. Is it in the first panel? Yeah. They were, uh, Kenji is playing the song uh, on the school. Yeah it, is, it, yeah, it is that song, 20th Century Boys. <laughs> I didn't know about what, what song that was when I first read through this one as well. And then I listened to it and then... Wow, this is actually so cool. It is cool. It yeah, is cool. Yeah. It kind of like pumps you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there will there will be other scenes where that song is played again, and every scene is very pivotal when that song plays. So cool. And it I'm, is so cool. 
I don't have a big music background. I wonder because there's a lot of musical references in here and the music picked like for to go along the different panels kind of fits that era and the time that they were growing up. So I wonder if people who were big music fans would also really like this manga because music is a big deal to Kenji. And there are a lot of those references kind of like interspersed within the, mm. the panels. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think I know most of the band and songs that Kenji, Kenji talked about. But yeah, I, I think for 60s and 70s music i'm not too well versed in those as well <laughs> it, it reminded me of kings of the wild you know by nicolas Sims, because there are so many references to music right in kings of right. the wild yeah but those are 80s eh, 70s yeah i think kings of the wild was was 70s and then bloody rose was 80s so for kings of the wild there were so many references that went over my head. <laughs> yeah but but that doesn't matter it, it is this is just like kings of the wild even if you don't know any music reference this is still very very good Still yeah, you don't need to know them. I think it's just one of those things. Like it'll be an yeah. Easter egg if it's something that you like, but it, you definitely don't need to know it in order to uh, to get through. On reread, were there scenes that stood out to you? Like things that now that you're going through it for the second time, you're like, oh, this is so clever. Now I wish I had picked up on this the first time. Like obviously you can't tell me what those are, but do you yeah. have that experience? You see, uh, you know, I really wanted, I really want to feel that way, but turns out I forgot so much. <laughs> I forgot so much. Every time a plot twist happened, wow, this happened? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I forgot so much. <laughs> even oh, this the, is amazing. Even so really what you're saying is that when I send you all these messages all the time about all this anime and all this manga, I'm doing you a favor because your yeah. brain has holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> you did, especially for a code case. Yeah, for code case, you also did. You reminded me of so many stuff. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. Even the Shawshank Redemption that you mentioned, when I when I read through this again, wow, I didn't remember this at all. This is definitely from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's good though. It's good that you, because I'm sure it makes the, the read through more enjoyable when there's still things that you can discover. Yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, years yeah. is a long time to take a break away from something. Yeah, it is more than 10 years. I think I found out about 20th century books. It was in university, and a lot mm -hmm. of some some of my friends keep on using uh well 20th century books as their wallpaper. Well, wallpaper. And back then I was well I was fanboying over other manga, right? And then what is this? Why are you guys all, always put this as as your wallpaper? And then yeah, <laughs> I read through it, and yeah, it is it is so good. Now I understand. <laughs> yeah, now I understand. <laughs> it's, it's no absolute boyfriend, but it's up there. <laughs> You should really have absolute boyfriend. <laughs> I should. I gave them to my sister. I'm sure she still has them. That'll be our next discussion. <laughs> no. <laughs> she said there are thousands of manga and that's the one you choose to discuss. <laughs> uh, but no, I am. Um, <clears throat> so what's oh, your favorite yeah. part reading through like of these first five volumes? What what part do you like the most? Uh, definitely the Ocho part. Ocho introduction. That was definitely the best one. And then uh, Kenji, the one that, that I just talked about earlier, Kenji protecting Kana. I think that was really awesome. But I mean, Kenji, he's broke. <laughs> he's not even rich. And, and he doesn't have, well, he doesn't have pretty much anything, but he has resilience, so much yeah. resilience. Yeah. And he taught Kana great things, even though Kana is still a baby. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Their yeah. relationship is is a big part of what I like about the story, too. It's nice to see it's what can happen a lot, at least in anime is like you get these, like you said, very particular types of characters who are very talented or very attractive or like, mm -hmm. you know, they're at the cusp of greatness and they just need to find it within themselves. And Kenji just gets, keeps getting beaten down. He's like, you know what? I got to keep going. I don't have much going for me. I'm kind of a flop in all areas of my life, but I don't have any choice. <laughs> so. Yeah, I work in the convenience store and this is all I can do. <laughs> it is it is amazing, really. Amazing. Just show that what, what an ordinary man can do. <laughs> yes. And the I like the humor too, like the parts that come in. Um, like the old man, Kamisama, the guy who oh, comes, in to, like, steal, yeah. <laughs> comes in to steal their expired food. <laughs> because yeah. he knows when everything's gonna go out of stock he's like i'm just gonna take these you're not allowed to sell them anyway so <laughs> there's like little there's little pockets of humor too which i think are really well done yeah yeah it is and i think other other favorite scene pretty much everything that kind of reveals even a bit of who friend is even just adding a mystery 
those all of them i think it all adds up it, it's really good it's truly really good even reading through it again i've read plenty a lot of manga since this one and this is still one of the best it's really one of the best <laughs> Going back through, do you feel like, oh, I should kick myself for not picking up on who friend is? Or <laughs> yeah. is it like going back the second time? I know you said you forgot a lot of things, but like now because you you know who friend is, like, yeah. are you thinking like, whoa, I really should have known? Or yeah. is it more like, no, this is a good job of keeping it hidden? No, but but it, it's really a good job. It's really a good job. But I mean, I, I did thought I should have known about this now. I mean, obviously I've read it. <laughs> so <laughs> I should have known about this. But even then, I think thinking about it technically, I think it's it's brilliant. I think the yeah. way he hits all the details and in in the well in plain sight, but yeah, it is it is brilliant. So good. I think you will be surprised. You will be surprised. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, and how yeah. do you so you in your read through, you have now reread all of it, right? You're finished it for a second time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I need to mention to you something because you're reading the perfect edition, right? Mm-hmm. It, it 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 has a different ending. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, I just find out about it too. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the fans doesn't like the new ending, so maybe that's something to consider. <laughs> so is that at the end of like I think there's eleven of these ones, and then it's twenty first century boys. So is it twenty first century boys that's different, or is it the end of these ones? No, uh, the end of the twenty first century boys. Of twenty first century boys. Yeah, twenty first century boys. So I think the perfect volume only has one right i think only has one 21st century boys uh it does, edition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's the one with the difference only that one for the 20th century boys it's completely the same okay interesting and is this because the author like this is the ending that he had wanted or uh, i i'm really not sure about this i mean even thinking about it i don't know why he i don't know why he included this i don't know i i definitely will stick to the original ending okay the first I will one do yeah that. yeah <laughs> It's just, yeah, let's just say that something, in my opinion, doesn't make sense. Hmm, interesting. Well, that's good to know. I mean, I won't be there for a little bit, but it's yeah. good, to, good to know. Oh, who knows? Maybe you will be finished next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hey, Patrick. Now that I have free reign, keep going. Let, let's do the second video now. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess for people like me and everybody else who might be reading through, what what can I expect from the second arc? Like, do you feel like the pacing really picks up, or what what changes? Is it more of the same? No, no. I definitely think the second arc improves so much upon the first arc, and the first arc is already so good already. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think a lot of people agree that the second arc is the best one. Okay. Yeah. This. Yeah. It is. It is brilliant. I cannot talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just have to find out really for yourself. I, I think yeah the last one uh my favorite one well it, it is the last one the the battle because it was as you said it is so shocking to have a time <laughs> skip after that because yeah that was so climatic already and it already felt like a final battle right yeah and there's just and it's very fade to black like you know they're gonna march into battle and then you get nothing you're just yeah, and it is. still you're just finding out bits and pieces you still don't know what happened to everybody who was there where they are what they're doing so it's uh it leaves a oh, lot open such a brilliant going. <laughs> i'm gonna go read it as soon as we stop talking <laughs> <laughs> so before, uh, i think we're going to end this conversation soon so the last one what's your theories and prediction do you have any no i'm so i'm the worst mystery predictor <clears throat> i <Really>? I, <laughs> I don't read like any thrillers i don't read any mysteries because I become suspicious of literally everything. There will be something mm. I'll be like, "Yes, this is so important. What? What? Like, <laughs> clearly, this means something, and it will mean nothing. Like zero. <laughs> it will mean absolutely nothing." Um, I really want to know what happened to everybody that day. What happened uh. that night? So that's what I'm looking forward to finding out. I already love Kana. Uh, we haven't seen very much of her since the time skip yet, but I'm glad that we are going to be following her. And even though, like you said, there's not a lot of female characters in this, it doesn't mm. feel that way when you read it mm. because the female characters are so well done and because they have yeah. such a prominent role in the story. It doesn't ever mm -hmm. feel like it's um, like the, 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 there's not a lot of representation there. So mm. I'm looking forward to seeing more of, of Kana and what she's going to do. But as for like predictions about who friend might be, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if I don't find out in arc two then maybe i'll have better predictions for arc three but i i'm assuming um that we're gonna see more of the mystery unfolding on 
like the side of the police force and then mm. also with Kana. Um, so we'll see more of that interaction. And I guess we're going to, in the same style as the, the first arc, get some of that juxtaposition between the past and the present and how those converge. Yeah, yeah, it gets so insane in the second arc. So yeah, I think uh, this is just us talking about the first five volumes. I think once you've read the second arc, I, I'm basically naming it the second arc. I don't know whether that's true or not, but let's just say that uh, six until the 15th volume is a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good stretching point to call it the second arc. Yeah. Sure. So after after that, we will have a lot of a lot to talk about because so many so many iconic scenes in second arc. <laughs> Yeah. Good, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll write them down. I'll make sure that I know which ones I want to talk about the most. I actually did for the second arc, but I forgot for the first one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this time I made sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll just type them into you on Discord, then they'll all be saved there and I can just go back and sort through oh, yeah, all please, those caps. <laughs> please do that, please do that. <laughs> <laughs> so have it, because you've probably forgotten it again already. No! <laughs> You're going to need the help. <laughs> How can anyone believe me as a reviewer if I forgot it that fast? That's true. Well, you know what? Better they know you. Better they know yeah. you for real. <laughs> hey, 10 years is a long time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's it for today's conversation. Seriously, uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for visiting this channel to talk about 20th Century Boys. And if you haven't read 20th Century Boys, I, we highly, highly recommend it to check it out. Really, it's incredible. Yeah. Bye-bye.